In this video, we're going to talk about how to do double integrals in polar coordinates. Now, as always, when we do something new, something a new way, we review how to do it the old way. So let's review how to do an integral in rectangular coordinates. The idea is if you want to integrate a function f of x, y over a region r, the first thing you do is you chop the region r into little pieces. And we usually do that by chopping our x interval up into little pieces all of width delta x, and our y interval up into pieces, all of width delta y. And so now we've got a whole bunch of boxes, each of width delta x and delta y. And if you want the area of one of those boxes, well, the area of one of those boxes is just delta x times delta y. And so we have to evaluate the function in each box. So we've picked a, a point x star, y star, somewhere inside of a box. And we evaluate the function there. And we multiply by the area of the box. So we take the, and then we add up all of the boxes. And that's an estimate to our integral. But the integral is the limit as delta x and delta y gets go to 0. That is, the limit as we chop things up finer and finer and finer and finer. OK, now let's see what happens with polar coordinates. With polar coordinates, we've got some region like this. And instead of chopping things up horizontally and vertically, we're going to chop things up radially. We're going to break the angles up. And we're going to break the radii. So we break things up into things that are kind of like boxes. They're called polar box, polar rectangles. And we say that each polar rectangle will, well, let's see, each thing here will have an angle of delta theta. And each box will have a thickness of delta r. Except that the area of a box is not delta r times delta theta. Delta theta is an angle, not a length. We'll see in a couple minutes that the area of the box is r times delta r times delta theta. So when we evaluate, we pick a point and we evaluate f in each box, we don't multiply that value by delta r times delta theta. We multiply it by the area, which is r times delta r times delta theta. And what's f of x, y? Well, x is r cosine theta, and y is r sine theta. So we plug that into f. We multiply by r times delta r times delta theta. That gives you the contribution of the box. Add up all the boxes and take a limit. So in the limit, you get the integral of f of r cosine theta, r sine theta. But you don't integrate it dr d theta. You integrate it r dr d theta. So where did this funny factor of r come from? Why do we have r dr d theta and not dr d theta? And that's, we have to figure out the area of one of our little rectangles. Now, we call it a polar rectangle, but if, it's, if delta r is small enough and delta theta is small enough, it is pretty close to a rectangle. And its depth is delta r, but its width is not delta theta. Again, delta theta is an angle. We call the width S. Then S is R times delta theta. Remember, when you work with radians, the angle is the distance divided by the radius. So delta theta is S over R. S is R delta theta. So the area of this red region is approximately S times delta R which is r times delta theta times delta r. So that's where the factor of r comes from. So now we can set up our integrals. We have type 1 and type 2 regions, just like with rectangular integrals. Type 1 regions are the most common. Those are the ones where we're going from a definite angle, let's say angle alpha, to, to an angle beta. And we're chopping things radially. And now. We integrate, let's see, f of x, y. x is r cosine theta. y is r sine theta. So you plug that into your function f. 
you multiply by r dr d theta, you integrate r. Well, r starts from the initial value of r, that's r equals g of theta, all the way out to the final value of r, that's r equals h of theta. And then the integrate theta goes from alpha to beta. Those are type 1 regions. We also have type 2 regions, which is where r goes from a definite initial value a to b, but it's theta is, a, the boundaries are theta as functions of r. And there you integrate over d theta first, but it's still r times d theta dr. You integrate as theta goes from g of r to h of r and as r goes from a to b.